28 years after Turkish troops invaded, the Turkish Federated State of Cyprus is now firmly rooted and part of the political landscape of this Mediterranean island. Memories of those still missing from the war of 1974 remain fresh and cast a dark shadow over attempts at reconciliation. But despite their religious and cultural differences, the two communities can get along. The looming presence of the founding father of modern Turkey, Kemal Ataturk, shares the village square of Pina with a mosque and a Greek Orthodox church. The Greeks and Turks who live here in the United Nations buffer zone, separating the island, are neighbors, not enemies. Some believe Pila could provide a model of coexistence for the whole of Cyprus if a settlement to reunify the island can be achieved. Pila has two town halls, a Greek one, and just 50 meters down the road is a Turkish one. Only 800 people live in Pila, but between them they share two municipal governments. The Turkish and Greek municipalities work in parallel, each providing for their own communities. The Turks of Pila have their own Makta, or mayor, who is responsible for the administration of their part of the village. In the Pila village, there are two different governments, you see, all together. And, uh, for example, uh, I will say something you will not believe, but it very seldom a Greek person comes to the Turkish co coffee and have a co coffee with us, or a Turk goes over there. Now they started to know a little bit uh, more uh, about, but in the past, it was horrible, you know. In the village square, the Turkish coffee shop is just a short distance from the Greek coffee shop. In the past, they used to cater exclusively for their own community. But the recent resumption of reunification talks has helped to warm relations between the two sides here in Pila. One of the Greek cafe's regular customers is George Georgiou, who likes nothing better than chatting with his friends, including his Turkish neighbor, Hayhan. As a Turk, he now feels comfortable enough to openly socialize with the Greek Cypriots of Pila, like his friend George. <laughs> the people in this village, they're wonderful. Turkish and Greek, they all live together, no problem. We do shopping together, we having picnic together. Up the road here, there is a place they can play music, Turkish music, Greek music. They sing together, they dance. Uh, no trouble at all, as far as I know. And George is optimistic for the future. He believes that if the politicians can only work out a way of doing away with the border dividing the island, Greek and Turkish Cypriots will all soon be living in harmony. Of course. In 24 hours, they will be together. Eating, drinking, celebrated together. I don't see why not. We used to live years ago together. Why not now? For now, the border dividing Cyprus remains in place, as it has since the Turkish Federated State of Cyprus was declared in 1975. Operation Attila, the code name for the Turkish invasion of northern Cyprus, was launched in July 74. Turkish paratroops faced little resistance from Greek Cypriot forces and soon secured the northern third of the island. The invasion had been ordered in response to a coup by Greek Cypriot hardliners who wanted formal political union with Greece. No one is sure how many people died in the fighting, and nearly three decades on, many on both sides remain unaccounted for. But after years of stalemate, Cyprus President Klaplos Kleridis and Turkish Cypriot leader Ralph Dektash at last agreed to begin negotiations on the future of their long-divided island. The breakthrough came after meeting face-to-face -face for the first time in four years in Nicosia. They're now embarked on intensive negotiations. It's hoped the meetings will produce a common vision by June. If all goes to plan, Cyprus will be put back together again as a bi-zonal, bi-communal federation. Greek Cypriots are anxious to join the European Union, a proposal which the Turkish Cypriots plan to block. I know my people that uh, we shall be obstructing that entry and we shall not accept to have become part of EU. Therefore, there shall be a big crisis in, uh, if, if EU accepts this divided country as, one, as if it is still one country. There will be crisis. I don't want crisis. We don't want civil war again. We don't want a strife. We don't want mothers to lose their sons. I am afraid that uh, he, if this is really what he believes, he lives under a great illusion because the Helsinki summit 
two years ago has made it very clear that the solution of the Cyprus problem is not a precondition for accession. Nicosia is the world's last divided capital, but the Greek Cypriot side is prospering. Greek Cypriots play host to three million tourists a year, bringing prosperity to this part of the island, where per capita incomes are seven times higher than on the Turkish side. Greek Cypriots believe that admission to the European Union would bring more investments in Chile. It's a very different situation on the other side of the dividing line. The self-proclaimed Turkish Republic is an international pariah. Only the Turkish government recognizes it, and there's little trade with the rest of the world. Before the negotiations resumed, the morale in the breakaway republic had hit rock bottom amid economic meltdown and the collapse of the banking system. Turkish Cypriot entrepreneurs, like the owner of this computer business, are desperate to expand. They look forward to a time when they can have access to the European Union's market of 250 million people instead of just 200,000. But there is some optimism and agreement can be reached, which will allow both sides to run their own affairs as two autonomous entities overseen by a loose central government. <laughs> If the Greek Cypriots will accept our proposals and our rights, if they adopt a progressive attitude, then I think the talks are a positive step. They will deliver results in the near future. It's not only for us, it's also for our brothers, the Greek Cypriots. Rum kardeşlerimiz, dostlarımız this will conclude well for both of us. The Turkish ambassador is a regular visit to Raf Denktaş's presidential palace. Ankara exerts a strong influence here, and it would be difficult for Denktaş to go against Turkey's wishes. Where ethnic conflicts uh, happen, the result uh, is never reintegrating as one again. Uh, it is either the destruction or uh, silencing of one party by the other or division of the country. Division has happened. So Cyprus became a viable divided country after 1974. Now the exercise is how to represent this divided country as one. You don't do it by forcing people to reintegrate and live in suspicion of each other forever. You accept this division and give them the facility to represent Cyprus as one internationally. This is confederation. Mr. Denktas wants two separate states. There can be no two separate states in the European Union. The European Union has very clearly stated that uh, only one Cyprus can join and not two. And the Cyprus that Mr. Vassilio wants in the EU is a Cyprus that reflects the Greek heritage of the majority of the population, reflects the culture, the religion, the music. Sides. Negotiations are due to continue until June, but could collapse unless there's compromise on both sides of the barbed wire.